Hi everyone, welcome back to Fertility Friday, our educational video series on infertility related topics. Last time we started talking about treatment options and in the next series of videos, we'll go over the process of in vitro fertilization or IVF. IVF or in vitro fertilization is a highly effective treatment option for patients with infertility. It involves stimulating the ovaries to grow more than one egg, removing the eggs from the ovaries, allowing the egg and sperm to meet in the embryology lab, and putting the embryo back into the uterus at a later time. The success rates of IVF have increased dramatically over the years due to significant technological advances. We will go over the steps of IVF with this video. The first step is synchrony of follicle growth. This process involves taking either birth control pills for a period of two to three weeks or estrogen for one week. This will help synchronize the follicles to grow together so that we may optimize the number of eggs we're able to retrieve. Then the patient will undergo ovarian stimulation. During this stage, the patient will take two to three daily injections over the course of 10 to 12 days to stimulate the ovaries to grow multiple mature eggs. The hormones in the injections, which are FSH and LH, are the same hormones the brain normally makes to stimulate one egg to grow each month in a normal cycle. With IVF, the patient is simply taking higher doses of FSH and LH to get multiple eggs to grow. The patient will also take another injection to help prevent ovulation. Each day involves taking two to three medications in the stomach or subcutaneous thigh. Some common side effects from the medication include bloating, abdominal discomfort, sometimes mood swings, and local bruising at the injection site. During this time frame, patients will get blood work and ultrasound performed every two to three days. This will allow the physician to track the progress of the cycle and adjust medication dosages as needed. Once the follicles reach the appropriate size, the patient will take a trigger injection, which will induce the final stages of egg maturation. Timing of this shot is very important since we must perform the egg retrieval prior to the expected time of ovulation. The egg retrieval is usually scheduled 35 to 36 hours after the trigger. The next step is the egg retrieval. The egg retrieval is a minor surgical procedure done to remove the eggs. The egg retrieval is performed with mild anesthesia and using ultrasound guidance. An ultrasound probe is placed in the vagina and there's a small needle that goes above the probe through a needle guide. The needle will be advanced through the vagina and into the ovaries. With gentle vacuum suction, the follicles are drained of all the fluid and the eggs within them. The fluid is then given to the embryologist who will look through the fluid to find the eggs. The procedure overall usually takes about 15 to 20 minutes. After the procedure, some light cramping and bleeding are normal. The partner will provide a sperm specimen the morning of the egg retrieval. The next step is fertilization. There are two ways fertilization can take place, conventional IVF or ICSI, which stands for intracytoplasmic sperm injection. For conventional IVF, the egg and sperm are placed in a petri dish and allowed to meet on their own. For ICSI, the embryologist will inject a single healthy sperm into the center of each egg. ICSI is usually recommended if there's any male factor contributing to infertility, if PGT or pre-implantation genetic testing is planned, if patient had a previously low fertilization rate with a prior IVF cycle, or if eggs had previously been frozen. The type of fertilization is usually planned in advance, but the embryologist will look at the sperm the morning of the egg retrieval, and if any sperm parameters are low, they may decide to proceed with ICSI. The next step will be the development of the embryo. The developing embryo will grow in the IVF lab for five to six days until they reach the blastocyst stage of development. The embryologist will examine the embryos over that time frame and will update the patients on the progress of embryo development. The next step will be the embryo transfer. After the embryo has grown to the blastocyst stage, it is either transferred back into the uterus called a fresh embryo transfer or frozen for transfer in a subsequent cycle called a frozen embryo transfer. A frozen embryo transfer allows for the embryo to be transferred into a more natural uterine environment by waiting until the patient's hormone levels have returned back down to baseline after an IVF cycle. The frozen embryo transfer cycle will also allow the patient the option for PGT or pre-implantation genetic testing. This testing will determine if any genetic or chromosomal abnormalities are present in the embryos. 
If the patient chooses to do this, the embryos will be biopsied, usually after it is grown to the blastocyst stage. The cells on the outside of the embryo, known as the trophectoderm, will become the future placenta. PGT involves removing a few of these cells on the outer portion of the embryo and sending them for genetic testing to determine which embryos are genetically normal. This technology allows us to increase success rates of conceiving, decrease miscarriage rates, decrease the risk of live births with chromosomal abnormalities, and decreasing the risk of multiple pregnancies, such as twin or triplet pregnancies. Finally, the pregnancy test will be performed approximately two weeks after the embryo transfer. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, give us a like, comment below. You can always follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube under the handle MD. Thanks again and see you next time.